And yes, now we are going to start this session with Sister Sylvia Bay with the topic of easing into Samadhi. I shall not read more about her profile because I believe you have known. But if you don't know her, you can raise your hand. Mice works. It's a miracle. <laughs> no need. <laughs> I, I, I always find that our announcement very long. Uh. <laughs> okay, shall we begin? We're going to do a morning sitting first. Okay? And it's going to be longer than usual. Let me switch this on. It's going to be longer than usual because um, we're going to do samadhi, right? I'm going to guide you through a, a session. Oh, this light has to be turned. Okay. I forgot that this one will be kept on. Come, come. You, come. Find a, a nice place to sit. Right here. Okay. If, shall we begin? Relax, relax, easing, remember? You must relax. Okay, so may I invite everyone to close your eyes. Sit upright, comfortably. You don't have to be ramrod straight. Come, you can still come in. You don't have to be ramrod straight, but you want your back to be upright. Okay? And I will then guide you along. Take three deep breaths. Deep in. Slow release. Breathe out slowly. Breathe deep in. So when you breathe deep in, the air must fill your lungs. Your body must feel good when you breathe in. When you breathe out, do it slowly. Control out breathing. Deep in again. Feel your lungs. Then slowly breathe out. Now you scan your form, scan your body for any tightness. If there is muscle tightness anywhere, you must consciously, deliberately release, relax the space, relax the muscle. Feel your body comfortable. The body must be comfortable. So it's a bit achy, it's a little bit Tired, strained, bit of ache. Shift your body a little. It's okay. Make yourself comfortable. Now put your attention on the contact points. The points of contact between your body and the surface. Just put your attention there. Look for all the points of contact. You do it slowly. So you note one point of contact. Put your attention there. Stay there for a while. Go to another point of contact. Stay there for a while. This is you. 
discovering your body. Be aware of your body weight. The body is comfortable, but the body is heavy. Very aware of this body. You're aware of this body. It's comfortable, present, it's there in your face. The body is there in your face. It's very, very clear, the body. You should feel comfortable. Very nice. For those of you who don't feel too comfortable, you should tell yourself, relax. Relax into the body. As you breathe in, be aware of this body. As you breathe out, be aware of this body. The body is breathing. The body is breathing. You don't have to control it. It's the, just the body is breathing on its own. Don't look for the breath. Just know that the body is breathing. It's very nice. So this is where you can settle into the breathing. So I repeat, feel the body. Be aware of the body. Feel the body. Feel it. As you feel the body, you're aware of the breathing. As you feel the body, you're aware of the breathing. You must relax. As you feel the body, you're aware of the breathing. It's just, that's it. Just watch this breathing. And there's nothing more to do. Just watch this breathing in the body. Don't force it. Don't push it. Just be. Be with the breathing. As you watch the body, be with the breathing. Patient, contentment. Patience and content. Relax. Relax into the breathing. Some of you would feel very nice. This breathing is very nice. I cannot explain it, but this is a sensation of pleasant, pleasant sensation. Enjoy it. If you feel nice, Feel nice. Just enjoy it. There should be a smile on your face. Smile. 
it's okay. Only I see you, no one else. You must enjoy this. So you know, uh, I'm watching this body. The body is breathing and I'm feeling good. Feeling very nice. If you feel very nice, this is what I want you to do. You must know the teaching came from the Buddha. If you're feeling very nice, remember this. The teaching, the guidance came from the Buddha. We are so grateful. So grateful for his compassion and for the gem, the treasure that he has left behind for us. So if you feel gratitude welling and surging within you, this is when you go feel this gratitude and then in your mind you say, express your gratitude, thank you. Say your thank you to the Buddha. You take a mental bow. Now go back to the body slowly. Become aware of this breathing. So you can feel, you can you can sense the mind, its joy, the gratitude, and you can see the breathing. You can still see this breathing in the body. With every breath in, you wish yourself well. May I be well and happy. May I, may I continue to be with the Dhamma till this breath end. With every breath out, may my loved ones be well and happy. May they too come to the Dhamma. So on your own, as you breathe in, may I be well and happy. May I always be with the Dhamma until this breath ends. As you breathe out, may my loved ones be well and happy. May they come to the Dhamma. Do it one more time on your own. Then when you're feeling really good, very nice, this is when in your mind share your merits with your loved ones. Meditation is very, very powerful merits on the mind. So with all the loving and kindness you can master, share your merits. Then, slowly come back to the body. Wriggle your fingers first. Can come down the breathing. Don't open your eyes. Just stretch your muscles mindfully. Stretch your muscles mindfully. Yes. Click, click, clock, clock the fingers and toes and 
shoulder and body parts you never knew you had. Stretch. It's the one time you'll be super mindful you can stretch. When you're done stretching, you can open your eyes. Pay money for the class or not? <laughs> how, how did y'all how did y'all feel? Is it good? On a scale of one to five, one is oh I just wasted fifteen minutes of my life. But because we are so polite, right? Nobody would say one. So I'll take two as the baseline. Five is oh I just went to Mars and just came back. Tawat Imsa Heaven. That's a five. Ah, yeah, I miss Eileen. Like, where's Eileen? So how many of you went to Tawa Team Sir and came back? <laughs> like a five, huh? How was it? Hey, seriously, so mindful. Oh, you went to the five, huh? To sit there or Tawa Team Sir? <laughs> uh, come, let's have uh, engagement. It's on, eh? <gasps> okay, you try. Oh, now you're an expert. Uh. <laughs> oh, we're so proud. Come. For this session to be fun, okay? We had a very good sitting. I, I assume many of you had a good sitting. How many of you would say that it was a good sitting? Hands up. Pretty good. How many of you would say that you are very experienced in Meditation. <laughs> Just the two of you at the back. Kim, of course, yeah. Seriously, you all are new to this. Cannot be, yeah. Uh. How many of you are really, really new to this? <laughs> okay, okay. How many of you have learned meditation? Ah. Ask the right question, get the correct answer. Huh? How many of you have learned meditation? How many of you would describe yourself as an amateur in meditation? Amateur means like, uh, I, I know something, like I know something. I know how to sit, I know how to breathe. Huh? How many of you would say that? How many of you would say, I am totally new? Like today is my first time, close my eyes and watch my breath. Who say that? So everyone has some experience lah. Okay, how many of you say that this morning experience? It's a regularity for you. Like I get this deep. <sighs> Life is good. Of course, yeah. It's a regular. Then the rest of you, it's relatively new. That you have to come here Sunday morning to do have this experience. <laughs> Better than this, lah. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Okay, I, 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 I come every morning, every Sunday morning. <laughs> do you know, you can do this for yourself. You just have to know why and how, okay? So I know that uh, some of you might have attended classes. Okay, uh, you're going to be too close to the board. May I suggest that you like occupy the space so that you're more comfortable? You can spread out. Today, for whatever reason, not a lot of people, so we can spread out, okay? And you'll be more comfortable because I'm going to write here. I'm going to block your view. You can start easing, easing, uh, easing. <laughs> if you don't want me to block, I'll be like this, like, like this. Like this, then you're going to do this and this. Okay? Just feel comfortable, spread out. You don't have no need straight line one. Okay, no need straight line. Because the mind, if you force it into a straight line, it's very hard. Okay. I chose this topic easing into samadhi. After, after I had Eileen nag, nag, nag at me and she says, Sylvia, what's your title? Says, Sylvia, what's your title? And then I had this one moment of 
genius and came up with this title. Okay, this is how we're going to do it today. Huh? Oh, yeah. First line already, so funny. Yesterday, you all had class, right? The the I always use blue, I mean black. What a strange colour, huh? So he uses black. I don't like black. Yeah. Okay. So this is how we're going to do it. Let's have red. Chinese New Year, ma. What? Why? How? Oh, how must be bigger. Give how a lot of space. How? So what? Okay. The magic of this board is when I erase, nobody dies. <laughs> okay. This is how we're going to do it. I'm going to take you through this journey. And we're going to cover four parts. What is Samadhi? Why Samadhi? What's so important about it? How, which is actually the class. So that's why How has a big page. And finally, if we have time, so what? If we don't have time, never mind. Not important. Nah. I mean, it is important, but for enlightenment. Okay? So the first thing is what? And why did I use the word easing? Okay? Tell me, when you guys went to learn, how many of you went, learned, learned how to meditate? How many? Come on, be honest. How many of you secretly watch YouTube to learn? Uh, some of you uh, secretly watch YouTube to learn. Uh. How many of you are curious? How many of you are curious? Curious, huh? Okay. You notice that when I chose this title, I didn't say easing into meditation. I used the word easing into samadhi. But when I ask you, have you gone to learn something, something, something? I asked you about meditation. It's deliberate. I deliberately chose those words. I avoid the word meditation because it carries a lot of connotation. Many of us have ideas what meditation should be like. Yes? Okay, tell me. I'm going to conduct this session, morning talk, like I'm conducting a class. So I want you to talk to each other five minutes. So unlike a class, right, where I can like stretch it out, in the talk like this, I only give you five minutes to talk to your neighbour. Turn to your neighbour, like turn to your, oh, sorry, you got no neighbour? Let's just sit a bit further, got neighbour. Okay. Two or three of you, five minutes, I want you to ask each other, what's meditation? Talk to each other. Go, go. I'm counting the time. Go, go. Five minutes, five minutes. What do you understand by the term meditation? Go. Talk, 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 talk. Yeah, go ahead. What is meditation? What is meditation? Five minutes. Got it ready? Okay. One minute, ah. Huh? One minute. Ah, okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. Very good. What is meditation? Okay.
<laughs> I stepped over. Hello. Guys, when us when I ask you to start, don't want to start. Now I ask you to stop, don't want to stop. What is wrong with you guys? I did put Tinghua. You are not you're not listening. Okay. Now, since you are so enthusiastic, right? So enthusiastic, let's go around the room, right? Okay, okay, I won't, I won't force you to give answer. I will invite this group, they are the first to finish. What's meditation? Total emptiness, agree? Try not to think of anything. Okay, so that's the answer here. What else? Who else got something different? Huh? Sorry? Mindfulness. Who said? Very good. What else? Mental cultivation. Is that ment meditation? Uh? Okay, uh, not bad. Uh. Good point, good point. Good point. Okay. No, seriously, it's a good point. Okay, but is that how you understand meditation to be? Hey, you all had so much discussion. Eh? <laughs> There's so much conversation. I late. I miss you. Oh, it's so late. Uh. <laughs> okay, come, come. What did you all have? It's a practice. Watching the mind. Sit, sit and watch the mind. Okay, what else? When you see, when you hear the word meditation, what comes to mind? What comes to mind? Calm. Yeah, very good. What else? Stillness. What else? Awareness. Very good. This is a Buddhist crowd. What else? Huh? Joy. This is a Buddhist crowd. Equanimity, you know, this is really a Buddhist crowd. If you ask another audience out there, none of your background, what would they say? They will say what they say, right? You are the one that hit the correct answer. Right? If you are out there asking people, what's meditation? What do you think they will say? Empty the mind, no thoughts. Try and empty the mind and have no thoughts. Is that how, you, how they, people understand it? Mindful. No, that's just a Buddhist crowd. <laughs> us, us. Ah, yeah, 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 that's true. Mindfulness, yeah, yeah, true, true. Anything else? Okay, when you go for classes, usually how do they tell you to do your meditation? How do they teach you? Huh? Don't think. How do you start? No, I want you all to go through this. Close your eyes. What else? Relax. What else? Huh? Picture that you're on a beach. Okay, great. <laughs> Sri Lankan one, huh? Uh, what else? What else? Scan the body. What else? Huh? Keep your mind light. What else? Focus on the breath. Where is the breath? Where do they tell you the breath is? At the tip of the nose. What else? I didn't send you to the beach today. I didn't ask you to watch your breath at the tip of the nose today. I did tell you to relax, right? Yeah, relax. But I didn't do some of the things that people ask you to do. Like empty your mind of thoughts. I just let those thoughts be. I didn't ask you to do anything that actually makes it very hard for you to settle. The word... The word meditation, unfortunately, has this connotation that people seem to think you have to put in effort. You have to have discipline. You have to sit for an hour. Okay, maybe less. Half an hour. Do you remember practice? They tell you practice. Words like that, practice. What do all these words conjure up in your mind? Hard work, I like you so much. Right? That meditation sounds so onerous. So much so, that when you think of meditation, you are, yeah. I, yeah. Now I must start. Oh, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm going to read my comics before I sit. Do you have that struggle? You relax and enjoy because you got the, you got the method. 
method. But for most people, it's usually a struggle. Huh? Ah, you struggle so hard, you are so tired, you sleep. Right? That typically is some of the things that we deal with. Now tell me, how many of you meditate daily? How many of you meditate daily and like, oh, my dopamine daily shot? How many? Very good. Oh, I don't, I don't. Some of you do it. Some of you try. Okay? And then if you like that, like that, like that for too long, what happened to you? It starts to become alternate days. And then once a week. Then if we're lucky, once a month. Then maybe just Sunday talk like, when Sylvia is here, just come in and just get our shot and then have it last for a month. Why like that? And then why did I use the word samadhi for this class instead of meditation? Because, one, I want to skip the connotations, the regular English baggage with that word. I want, I want you to come in going, what ah? I don't know what you're talking about. I want that. So then, your mind is open for me to fill. Okay? Samadhi, what is it? Definition. Anybody? You want to try? Stillness. Excellent. So the definition, right? Sorry, I have to write small because there are a lot of things to write. Stillness. What else? Watchful. Present. Present. The word samadhi actually talks about a state of mind. It's a state of mind where you will observe the following mental states. You must have the whole package. And, I come, and I'm coming in with three sets. Three packages of mental states. For you to experience this stillness, the stillness actually comes with three packages. Okay? Okay. Package number one. One set, huh? I call it cognitive. For one of a better word, lah, it's intelligence, wisdom, that kind. Huh? Cognitive means the brain. There is a second package, which I call emotions. Emotions. And there is a third package, which I call miscellaneous. Because they don't fit into cognitive and emotions, so I just like, Miscellaneous, okay? But miscellaneous is a bad word. Uh, others. Marginally better. Okay, now let's go through the package. Cognitive. This is where the mind is mindful. I mean, as in it's related to not feelings, but of mental, these are mental states. Okay, what's a mental state? Mental states is actually every, your experiences, your, your, every page, like fear, anger, sadness, and all these things are mental states. Okay, a state of mind. Mental states is a state of mind. Not necessarily emotion, but it can come with it. It's like if you have fear, what's your emotion? Unpleasant the feeling will be unpleasant. If you have joy, the feeling is pleasant. Okay? Mental states. And all mental states are conditionally a reason. Right here and now, I ask all of you individually to feel fear. Go on. Feel fear, go. Do you all know fear? Have you all felt fear before? Okay, now try. So you must like, Fear, fear. How come don't have? <laughs> great answer. Because meditated. Yeah, great answer. Because the conditions are wrong. Okay? Now I ask you, uh, I'm telling you, it's going to be dark. You are alone. It is 12 at night. Here in BF. 
You can even hear the and then the door opens. Do you need me to tell you what to do? Your fear will come out spontaneously, right? Same thing. Same thing. Okay. Mental states, all mental states require conditions. Give it the wrong conditions, nothing happens. With the right conditions, the mental state will arise. Samadhi is a mental state. Samadhi, that stillness, that clarity of mind being present, that stillness, it's a mental state. It's not magic. Do you understand this? That is the reason why Someone with zero experience in meditation, oh sorry, zero, no training, zero training. And I'm going to tell you a story of how this happens. I know of one person, I know of one person who went to a temple, a monastery, sorry, he went to a monastery. He knows nothing. He sat at the back of the room and he was so happy, he went into samadhi. For the next 10 years, he tried to get back to that state. No training. Sitting quietly in the back of the room. Experienced his first time. Samadhi, I'm pretty sure he went into jhana from what he described to me. No training. No one said, watch the breath. Here, 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 here. I'll give you GPS. I'll give you GPS. Two inch from left, two inch from right. No one told him a thing. He went in. 10 years, he tells me, 10 years, he tries to find his sweet spot. And he's still looking. I told him how to do it, but he don't want to listen to me. So he's still looking. Okay? How could someone with no training, no background, no nothing, just woo into his, his jhanas? Because the conditions were right. So I'm telling you, it's not about the steps. It's about the condition, okay? Okay, so cognitive, uh, these mental states will be present. Mindfulness will be there. Will be, must be, okay? It's the state of mindfulness. Uh, clarity. Alertness. Confidence. Actually, I'm not even sure this is cognitive. Confidence. These are mental states which will be there. Maybe confidence should go into others. Huh? Equanimity. That's why you, some of you say equanimity, clarity, sharpness, alertness, whatever it is. What is the emotion present? Joy. Happiness. Sometimes so powerful, it's euphoric. Sometimes, so powerful, people cry as they meditate. There you go. What's going on? The search of the dopamine is what's going on. Are they really meditating? Yes. Some of you were wiping off tears, I know, earlier, which is okay. I congratulate you on your euphoria. Okay? But it has to be there. If you don't feel pleasant, how many of you earlier on felt pleasant sensation? Like, very nice, pleasant. Yes, you were settling into that stillness. If you feel it, you're in. If you don't feel it, you're nowhere near. You have to go in through this door. And then it gets to a point where you're equanimous. This is the door. You cannot stick in by the back door one. You can go through the door very fast. Like, whoop! Was that joy I felt? Yes. But it's very fast. Because you're so familiar, you're not looking for it. But imagine you are experiencing for the first time. Of course you'll linger. Because you really enjoy yourself. For those of you who, do, who meditate regularly, I can bet my last dollar you enjoy it. It's your dopamine inject for the day. Okay, it's normal. Okay, this set of mental states, I didn't say them. The Buddha talked about them. There is a sutta, Kaya Gata Sati Sutta, uh, MN119. 
Majima Nikaya 119. You go read it. It's a very long one, which describes the jhanas. And in his description of the jhanas, all these mental states he talks about, about the mind coming together, about the alertness, the clarity, the equanimity, they're all there. Does it come together? It can come very fast together if you stay peaceful. Oh, I forgot about contentment. You'll be content. Okay? All these mental states merely describe that mental state of samadhi. When you're in samadhi, the mind is calm, is quiet, is present, is alert, is clear. Is it possible for you to vanish? Yes, but only when you're very, very deep. And that's not the version we want. We don't want you to vanish. You vanish, learn what? You vanish, you don't, you don't, you don't revisit the Dhamma. What you want is to get the mind to a state of clarity and then it becomes aware of certain concepts always present in your mind. But that's a story for a different day. That's the next class. Today, we're just going to talk about what is it? Why do we need this state? There are two big parts. Lah. Why do we need samadhi, right? Why, why would we want this state? So part one is rather superficial, and I consider it useful. Rather superficial, meaning it's, it's not the key thing that we want you to learn, but it's good particularly good for selling the, 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 the practice. And that is mental wellness. Oh, let's... Mental wellness. Okay, let's just talk about this first. Out there, they typically will talk about mindfulness for mental wellness. Okay? Mindfulness, as I've said again, is one of the mental states present when you're in the state of samadhi and then they say oh, quiet. They seem similar but not identical. They're just present. They're like conjoined twins. In the state of samadhi, mindfulness has to be there. But when you're mindful, you're not necessarily in the state of samadhi. Okay? Like a poorer cousin. But when you have this state, minimally in your daily life, you're a happy person. Minimally. And you can constantly just revisit. So you're out there, someone splash water on you, then, oh, my beautiful pants. They go, okay, la, I should have wore black. And then you move on. Your mind can restore mental balance very fast. A joy. You stare at flower, you smile. You stare at candle, you smile more. You everything smile. People look at you also smile. Because you're smiling at them, right? They either think you're crazy. So the mask used to be very helpful, right? Or, or they just feel very stressed and then you smile at them. They, uh, for one split minute, you gave someone peace. It's a very nice thing, okay? I'm just telling you. Smiling is good. Smiling is infectious. That's mental wellness. But for practitioner, samadhi leads to insight. Samadhi not just leads to insight. Samadhi affirms path, meaning to say, if you are a practitioner, this state of samadhi can be very powerful to help you understand the Dhamma. Without samadhi, you cannot. It's a very, very, very hard. You don't need the deep samadhi, but you need some degree of stillness, some degree of stillness to be able 
to understand at an experiential level the Dhamma. Like Anicca, yeah? impermanence, Dukkha, even the word Dukkha. All these, when the mind is still, the mind sees better. That's what it means. Let me ask you, how many of you make tea from, you know, tea bag? You have done it before. All of us have, right? Yeah? Can you make tea with, no, typically you make tea with boiling water. Oh, 100 degree. Oh, shoot. But can you do it with 90 degree? Can you do it with 70 degree? Can, uh, just a bit lukewarm. No? Can you do it with 30 degree? Can, uh, it's just awful. No? Can you do it with zero degree? Cold tea. No? But somehow it just does not have the right feel, right? Meaning to say, meaning to say without samadhi, samadhi is your 100 degree. Okay, let's just pretend that samadhi is boiling water. So without samadhi, your regular mind, gadang, 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 is zero degree. Lah. So can you have a rising of inside? Can ah? But very long, oh, very hard, oh, then you taste really like, is it, huh? is it inside? Ah? Is it tea? Huh? Is it tea? Huh? So same thing, like, is it inside? Hmm? Inside? Don't know, I think better ask Pante. Achan, achan! It will be like that. Lah. Okay? But, when it's a hundred degree, when your mind is completely still, whatever knowledge arises in that state, you know. That's why it's confidence. You know. This, this was what the Buddha was teaching. So for those of you who believe you have, you have gone into jhana, which may be, may be possible, why not? But you come out and you say, what happened? I'm not sure. Mm, uh, then your jhana will be corrupted. A bit corrupt. A bit corrupted. Okay, you understand this, huh? So why do we want this? At the mundane level, it's mental wellness. You really will feel very good. And it allows you to be very calm, very peaceful in managing relationships. I will say this, and I'm pretty sure after that, the arrows will come shooting. If for whatever reason, in your daily life, your relationship, all aspects of relationship, goya, broken. All aspects of relationship, tension, hostility. You are not a practitioner. It cannot be. Because if you start to have samadhi as part of your training and your mental states, right? you will learn to really, really be peaceful with yourself and with the world. And it's what the Buddha would say. He does not quarrel with the world. He does not pick fights with the world. He's completely at ease and at peace. So how do you know if you are kind of heading in the correct direction of the Dhamma? is when you're really at peace. Okay? So... These are the two big ones, and now we go into why we are all here today. How? And this one, I probably won't write because I'll forget to. I get very carried away telling my story. If you recall, what did I do with you earlier on? Do you recall? What did I do? I get you to relax. Relax what? Ah, so the first big chunk is body, okay? Do you recall what, after what I did with the body, what did I ask you to do? Okay, those are bodies, right? Contact point, watch the seal, the, the body in the breathing, watch the body, I keep linking the two, huh? okay? Then at one point, I said, if you're feeling good, feeling pleasant, I ask you to embrace it. Like, go into it. Get into the good feeling. So what's the second part? Feeling. But there is a third part, which I didn't do much today. 10, 15 minutes, a bit short. Lah. But it can be done. And the third part is the mind. This is when you go into a bit of stillness. How many of you felt some... Hey, 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 hey. Mind. 
of you felt there was that sense that you are present. You didn't have to put in a lot of effort. The mind didn't quite drift all over the place. You were present. There was, there was present. And there was pleasant sensation. And it was just quiet and calm. And you were watchful and alert. How many of you felt that way? That's samadhi. Okay, you just experienced samadhi. Samadhi is felt like this. That you're present without effort. The, the mind is quite happy just squatting down there. And watch, of all things, breathe. Like it's the most interesting thing of my life today. This breath. Watch how it bubbles up. Oh, look, look, look. It fades away. Oh, so nice. Oh, bubble, bubble up again. Did you all kind of watch breathing like this? With keen interest, observing this body, just... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Did you feel that way? May yo. You're supposed to be in love. Okay, maybe in love is wrong. <laughs> Enthralled. Be with the breathing. Enjoy this moment. Okay, you can only do that if you enjoy. It's the most interesting thing. Breathing. Watch. Imagine you try to teach the baby, right? You want to entertain the baby with breathing. Actually, we should have done that. Then our kids will all be able to meditate. Instead of entertaining them with like... Okay. okay. So, how did we flow? Now let me explain. Always use this body as your doorway into the quiet. This was not invented by me. It is in the Sutta. Let me share with you how I kind of stumbled into this. I started meditation in 1993-ish. I can't remember whether it's 93 or 94, but it's probably 93. I went into it. I went to learn. I checked out three teachers, four plus the retreat one. And every one of them taught this. Find your breath, so the GPS style, huh? find your breath. It should be here, the tip, the tip here. In fact, you touch it, touch it. So you feel the, go for the sensation, that's where the breath is. I had this, and I promptly fall asleep. Every class. And I, I, I used to tell my friend, I can do it. When it's, it's, it's a, that, when it's good, it's really good. When it's bad, it's horrible, right? When it's good, mine goes still. When it's bad, mine gets restless or I sleep. And this went on for years. It's always 50-50. You never know what happened the day you sit until you sit. And then at the end, you give yourself a score. Oh, today fail. Oh, A+. Plus. Every day should be. A+, plus is the worst. When I get an A+, plus, right, the next few sittings is going to be gone. <laughs> Every time A+, plus, I was like, oh, I got A+, plus. today should be A++. Plus plus. Nothing works like that, okay? Some of you know that I, I went on an external posting. I was a diplomat. I was in uh, Mima for five years. And when I was in Mima for five years, every day I dredge out my Dhamma books. Nobody around, ma. Not a lot of entertainment going on in Myanmar, right? I don't have like a battalion of friends in Myanmar, right? It's, everything is work. So I started delving, going deep into the sutta. Deep, really deep. I sit, I read, I go back. That kind of deep. Every weekend was a retreat. And for some of you who knows me, I, I never used to teach meditation. I teach everything but meditation. Because 50% you dare to go and teach, huh? What kind of a driver, right? Learner, learner you go and teach. I'm 50% that you go and teach people how to drive. You don't know whether it's going to knock something or not, right? Okay. I, I can't. So I never do that. But then after I came back from Myanmar, it's so often I do this. Retreats, la, 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 because the secret really is in the suttas. The secrets of the, the, the samadhi practice is in the sutta. And you understand that? 
you will be able to hit your 100%. Oh, 98% because I've got bad days. Like you're very tired. So, in the Sutta, it was said, use the body. Hold, use the body to hold your attention. Of course, the contact point was not in the Sutta. Lah. This is modern invention. But the Sutta really says, go into your body, be diligent, looking at the body, stay with the body. MN118, MN119, go check. Go into the body, stay with the body. What is Anapanasati Sutta? Experiencing the body. Right? Experience, knowing the body, experiencing the body, letting go of the body, relinquishing the body. It's the body, body, body. That's the most important part to getting you through the door. And you always start being very comfortable. Sister Sylvia, can I lie down? Can. You lie down, then you may sleep. <laughs> if you can guarantee me you lie down, you won't sleep, go ahead. But of course, the Buddha says, sit upright, be comfortable. And he always says, find a space where you are not distracted. That's for start point. When you are new, when you are new, it is good to find a place where your mind does not get distracted by external sound. But when you are experienced, you sit on the public bus, the MRT, you can stand and go into samadhi. Okay? Not a problem. You can. Because samadhi is not going deep. It's just present, present. In fact, you stand there, you oh, feel this body, feel this body, feel this breathing, feel this body, and oh, destination. Jaran yenos. And then you go down. Very nice. Okay? Use the body. And I use the word easing. means you've got to be very careful. Like you're stepping into a bathtub of water. You go, pa, pa. How much of the water is left in the bathtub? So ease into the water. Experience the temperature slowly creeping up your form. Enjoy it. So remember this. You must be comfortable. So get rid of those muscle knots and all. Be really comfortable. And then sit down and you say, I'm prepared to be entertained. I'm prepared to enjoy. Even if nothing happens, nothing happens. You already sat quietly and the mind is present. That's all. That's all. That is all. The second thing, Anapanasati Sutta, if you remember, he talks about feelings. Piti, sukha, relinquishing. Why like this? Because really, once your body went, once you feel the body very clearly, and you start to feel good. Earlier on, you went through, right? You all felt good, felt comfortable, right? You all felt comfortable. That comfortable, that good, is your next ticket. So the first ticket is allowing the mind to settle into the body. The next ticket is. Once you feel very comfortable, you must feel comfortable. You must. Is this enjoying? Buddha tell you, you cannot enjoy me? In fact, have you remember, do you remember he said this? There are some pleasure which are okay. You can go into them. You can enjoy them. This is it. This is the one. Where you can enjoy it. You can feel good. These are your dopamine releases. Okay? So the feeling, go deep into it. The stronger the feelings, the clearer your mind. I'm just telling you. You say, my feeling a beat. Your mind is only a beat into the samadhi. It doesn't mean that over time it should diminish in strength. Maybe for some, maybe not. Maybe for some, it does diminish because... These guys, not very interested in the good feeling. They just, they just want the mind to go quiet and still. Then they're happy. There are some people like that. But for some, they can continue. Every time they sit, it's a, oh, yay. Okay? Everyone can do it. Everyone. All of you. Okay, I think my sense is probably 90% of you had a... Pretty good sitting. You know how long you sat, by the way? 
It's about 10 minutes. Like, uh, 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 more than 10 minutes. It's pretty nice. And you don't even know time has passed. Okay, so that's the second part, the feeling. The third one is, as your feeling grows, you become more aware that there is, you are here, that is now. I, I, I am present. Okay, maybe don't say I. La. Present. Yeah? Just present. That sense of here and now, that sense of here and now is samadhi. And this morning, you chanted, right? Sanditiko, akaliko, hipasiko, panaiko, la 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 la. It's also a description of samadhi. It's a description of Dhamma, it's a description of Samadhi. You see, here and now, when you see it, timeless. Time fades. No sense of wanting to move on, just present. Akaliko. Ehipasiko. Can you imagine? I want to see, I feel. This is great. I'm present. It's beautiful. Is it not ehi pasiko? Stay present. You just want to stay. It's very inviting to stay, continue, see, see more, experience this. Opanaiko. As you sit, as you are present, the Dhamma knowledge starts to arise. It starts to manifest. To be realized by the wise for himself. Is that not a description of samadhi? So for those of you who go do your meditation regularly, you know exactly what I mean. Yes? Think about it. Sanditiko, akaliko, hipasiko, panaiko, pachatang we di tabo hiti. Right at that moment, this, this is madi. This is the ma. And you know what's really beautiful? You can do this five minutes, powerful merits, which is the last thing I said. This is a very powerful set of merits. Because your mind has never felt this way. The mind has never felt so clear, so present. At, at that point, at that point, I can guarantee you, at that point, uh, when you experience it, at that point, all quarrels forgotten, all sins forgiven, all demands let be. At that point. That's why, oh, previously, previously in the other state, I talk about equanimity. Equanimity. Equanimity means a state of mind that has no preference, no deep desires. It's okay with everything. It is also contentment. And this is as close as you can get. A state of samadhi is as close as you can get to experiencing the noble mind. The noble mind, the mind of the Aryas. At that state, this is how you experience the noble truths. So somebody, and this is the so what part of the house. The so what part is when you experience the state of samadhi, which is still present, calm, quiet, joy, or maybe you pass that equanimous. That state is the state of the noble mind. Why do I say that? You go look at MN 118. 119, MN 119, and the Buddha, when he describes the third jhana, he says, the noble man, the noble ones will say, will describe this state as like that. This is what the noble ones will experience. Something like that. You could add a, you could look at the text. So you want to experience Nibbana? It's samadhi. Proxy. It's a proxy. Because in that state, when the mind goes quiet, it cannot have demands. It cannot have. If you, why do I and why did this poor guy for 10 years looking back, by now 15 years really, 
13 years, right? I think 13 years by now. If he has not found it, right, it's 13 years search. Okay? Why when you are searching, you can't get it? Because it's the first, first and second noble truth. Dukkha. When you want, the mind can't settle. When you let be, the mind settles. So it has to be easing. When you sit, after this class, you just remember this. When you sit, you must tell yourself, it's okay. I'm just enjoying this time for myself. It's a me time. Okay? Just tell yourself, this is a me time. I'm just going to settle. And then the steps, calm the body, make the body feel good, ease into this breathing. If you're going to use breathing, watch this breathing and be present. That's all. How much time? Don't care. Just sit. Do I set a clock? Don't set. Unless you've got an appointment to keep. Otherwise, don't set. Just enjoy. Enjoy this breathing, this watching this body. Okay? If you have no experience watching the body, start. Start by actually, I sit and I look at all the points of contact because those are the points which are the heaviest, the most in your face. Go for those big ones. Settle into those. Then, after a while, look at the breathing. Don't jump from, hello, the world, breathing. Sometimes it's hard, unless you're very familiar. Uh, otherwise, it's hard. So instead, settle into the body, watch the spine, watch the posture. In fact, the teaching also talks about posture and all. Watch the posture, be aligned to the posture. After a while, when the mind is more settled, you can start watching breathing. That's also how the Buddha taught in the Sutta. As you stretch, as you become aware, be clear, present. So the body first, always this one first. Once you are settled into the body, go into the breathing, then you wait patiently. Okay? Wait patiently. And then the good feelings will come. Okay? We're good? The so what is explained already. Uh. Because if you, can, if you can experience the samadhi, it is your proxy experience, proxy experience of Nibbana. It's when there is this sense of how the noble ones will experience life. Imagine this becomes part of your life. So, we all know about the eightfold path, right? But actually, there is a tenfold path. Samadhi, right knowledge, right... After samadhi, right samadhi, sama samadhi, after that is samanyana, sama samimuti. Samanyana, right knowledge, perfect knowledge, Sama vimutti, perfect release. Okay? So samadhi first, then the mind understands, understands the dhamma, the mind let go. That would be finale. Okay? Okay, question. Perhaps Thank shall we say three sadhus first? Okay. Any questions from the floor? Right. Uh, hi, it's my first session. I don't know how do I greet you and start. Uh, so I'll just go to the question directly. I have two questions. One, uh, when we reach the state of samadhi or even a pleasant feel during meditation, uh, the first time. The next time when I meditate again, it feels like an attachment. I want to go back to that state. And when it doesn't happen, it doesn't make me feel good about the second session or third. So how do we get rid of this attachment to that state? If you understand the knowledge, the steps, you understand why the steps are like that, hopefully it will get through your resistance and enable the knowledge is an enabler for you to let go. You understand? Huh? So you have to get into your system, get it into your mind to say, I chase, I seek, I yearn, nothing happens. 
I must accept. I must be content. Use the word, avoid using the word let go. Use the word content, accept. Because there is a subtle difference. Let go is I seek to do something. I seek to let go. To be content means I accept whatever is here. Okay? You keep telling yourself, I accept, I accept, I accept. And then the mind, the brain, very stupid one, the brain will, oh, accept, I understand. Then they will do it. By the way, uh, when you want to teach yourself something, do not, and I'm going to use this for the last time, do not say, do not. Okay? If you say, uh, I want not to be sad, or you tell somebody, don't be sad, right? Don't say to the person, don't be sad. What must you say? Be accepting, be happier, uh, be comforted. So I'm thinking of someone who has lost somebody. Be comforted. You know what I'm saying? Don't be sad. He will hear the word sad. <laughs> then the brain will like, yeah, I'm sad. Yeah, I'm sad. Brain, brain is really stupid one. I mean, not hers or his, ours. Okay? So, tell yourself, Content, contentment, I'm content, I accept, I'm happy here, I am grateful, I can do this. Words like this softens the mind, takes, takes away the pinch of that seeking. Okay? So that's question one. Thank you. The second question is when I'm meditating or even otherwise I'm at peace throughout the day, you know, um, anything that comes through, be it a tough situation also, it makes me still feel calm and peaceful. It doesn't really uh, get a fire in me to, you know, give out to that situation. So does it make me actually a slow person somewhere? Slow person? Because you, are co you continue to be peaceful? Yeah, no, I mean it means your dopamine very good. <laughs> the... Okay, these brain chemicals are released when you meditate correctly, eh? when you sit and you experience samadhi properly, or even mindfulness. Uh. Okay, they all don't know, but mindfulness and samadhi can be very close. Uh. But anyhow, so when you experience that, actually the mind, the brain, the brain releases certain chemicals. Those are the chemicals, as long as they're swimming in your system, you stay in that calm, forgiving, generous state. Yeah, it's normal. And my advice to you and to anyone else, who, if you experience that state, Outside of meditation, that's the state you can see the Dhamma. This is the one. When you're quiet and calm, and then you just let be, and then maybe, maybe Dhamma insights will arise. Again, uh, this one, conditional. If you have not gathered enough, vacuumed up enough that data, there is nothing to churn out. We are not the Buddha, right? None of us are Buddha here. What do I mean? If you are the Buddha, when your mind goes quiet, the mind becomes alive for you, you can see your insight. But you're not the Buddha. I don't discover the path myself. I need his map. So therefore, you must gather up this map and fit it in here and store it away. Then when you go quiet and the mind goes still enough, it's a madhya, then the mind will go and pull the data for you to see. This is all conditional, not will. This is not will. How do we know this? There was a sutta. This is my favourite chicken and egg sutta. N not the way you think. There was this sutta where the Buddha was explaining how enlightenment comes about for people. And he said, it's just like the hen sitting on the egg, waiting for the chicken to hatch, the chicks to hatch. The hen does not sit there and go, hello, can you hurry up? It is time to hatch, you know. Hello, he said. The hen does not do that. Buddha actually said, the hen does not do that. The hen will sit, and when the conditions are right, the chicks will hatch without prompting 
from a hovering hand. And in the same way, if the conditions are right and right for you, the Dhamma awakening happens. Without you going, when will it happen? When will it happen? It doesn't have to be like that. And it shouldn't be like that. It is not will. So then, how do you increase increase the chances of awakening for you? How? Abner not here. How? How do you increase? Set the condition, right? Set the condition, right? Very good. What are the conditions that we need? Sadda, virya, sati samadhi panya. Sadda, confidence and faith. Virya, effort to do, to keep the mind pure and wholesome. Sati, mindfulness, samadhi, samadhi. Huh? Don't need me to explain this one. Panya, wisdom. How do you increase panya? Uh, this is where you go, how? How to increase which one? How do you increase panya? You learn. You read. You engage in conversation with practitioner. You don't engage with conversation with every Tom, Dick, Harry. Practitioner, the Sangha who understands. So all this Sangha that comes to town, very good practitioner, you sit by their feet and Okay, okay, not just to take selfie, but really to like <laughs> sit at their feet and Bante, I got a question for you, Bante, or Ajahn, whatever it is, learn. Learn and read the sutta. Read the sutta. I are reading very hard. Find Kalyana meter, make them read. <laughs> Have conversations with Kalyana meters, friends, good friends. Learn together. Okay? And then. Ta-da! Nice day, quiet, calm, condition right, the mind goes quiet. Then you have enough books or resources or data for the mind to pull. Okay? The mind must pull by itself. I tell you that's how it works. Buddha also tell you that's how it works. Remember chicken and egg, huh? remember that. Okay? Thank you. Right, any more? <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, by the way, the chicken and egg, I think it's MM53. <gasps> Seka Sutta, uh, trainee. Oh, yes, I think it's that. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, this is a, the, the question is, uh, you, you let us through that three state, right? Anchoring the body, experiencing the feeling, experiencing the mind, raising the mind. The next one is the one which I will always like, okay, how am I going to do it? Uh, contemplating Anicca and so on. So you are talking about the fourth one? Yes. That one next class. Next class. While I I was uh, thinking about the question, I saw you answering the last question saying that uh, when the condition is right, uh, insight will arise. By itself, so maybe I should not go there, but wait for it to okay arise. La. Okay, okay. Sneak <laughs> preview, sneak preview. Huh? <laughs> you can thank him later. <laughs> when the mind goes quiet, when the mind goes quiet, and your mind is okay, this is how it must flow. Samadhi, the state of samadhi when you experience it, will strengthen sadha. Samadhi is very cute. It's, he's a multiplier. His job is an enabler and a multiplier. When the people, for those who regularly experience Samadhi, right, your Sadha sure very the Kilat one, very strong. The conviction, oh, Dhamma, yeah. That sense that the Dhamma is it. Because there's so much, so much joy. And it's all linked to Dhamma. Sure, these guys, the confidence through the roof. So Sadda is powerful. You are such a happy person, Ma. Your mind is naturally in a good state. This is when you should endeavour not to let it backslide into old habits. Our regular mind habits, it's negative. 
regular mind, without training, without, without restrictions and guidance, it is negative. So very instinctively, uh, people nudge you, you will turn around and... Mm, unless you are mindful. Then, oh, not some more. Lah. I let you nudge this side. <laughs> turn the other shoulder. Uh, okay. Otherwise, you, the instinct is... It's, it's programmed into you. It's programmed into us. Programmed into us, this habit to push back, to fight for your turf. This is, this is instincts. Okay? And you train so that the instinct starts to fade away. Start to calm down. And that's virya. That's, that's the virya. You can do these two very well daily basis, on a daily basis, your mind is actually mindful. Meaning, without effort, meaning is present. It will drift a bit, then it will come back. It will drift. It's like a very well-behaved child who doesn't run away from the parents. Parent is here. Okay? So the mind will naturally calm quiet. Naturally. Yes? Naturally present. Okay? And when that happens, back to the samadhi house. Back to the stillness and quiet. Okay, in that state, as a practitioner, what do you look out for? It depends on you. That these, are the, these are your options. This is your buffet spread. Four noble truths and the eightfold power. Four noble truths. Lah. Four noble truths. A tilakana, anicca dukkha anatta. Impermanence, suffering... Selflessness, soullessness, whatever, another. These are the two. If you super kilot, super strong, super sharp, super well well versed in the Dhamma, okay, can go. But teacher some to go. You don't need to. Because that one is it's it's a, it's a very deep understanding of how that mind works. It's okay, you don't have to worry about that. Just go for these two. Noble truth and the eightfold path. And Tilakana, three characteristics. That is why in Anapanasati Sutta MN118, he goes into contemplating impermanence, contemplating fading away, contemplating Nirudda, uh, cessation. And then let it go. That's why it goes like this. Because at the end of the day, the mind learns contentment, letting be. Contentment. But this is a changing, it's a massive transformation of instincts. Our instincts is to hold, to judge, to hold. That's our instincts. The practice is to shift you away from these instincts of grabbing and holding and judging and so on. But for you to be able to do that, you must begin to start to understand how the mind works. Samadhi is that root there. It's what makes it possible. Okay? Sunday talk is not meant to be this level of chim. Not, not meant to be. It's supposed to be easier, so people are very inspired and very happy. Then they go all very, very happy, right? It's not supposed to go into this level. That one, DFC too. Okay. You're welcome to join us. Okay. Ken? Thanks, Sister Sylvia. Uh, it might seem like a basic question. Why is the body important? Is there an alternative to the body to achieve this calmness, mindfulness. Second question is uh, Vedana, feeling tone. Could you... Mm, maybe just... Uh, yeah, feeling tone, like the understanding and awareness of feeling tone at, when it arises, how can it... I suppose, how can it help us achieve samadhi and then insight? Ah, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. This morning at the... Guided meditation. How did you feel? Quite nice, right? Uh, quite, nice. quite present, huh? You got mindfulness, huh? Ah, right. 
Okay, good. Now I can say things and you can understand. What was your first question again? It seems like a very basic question. Ah, basic, basic. Okay, got it. Okay. Why the body? Can there be other things? Can. Can be other things. Uh, but it's, it's just these two. It's body or feelings. Okay? It's body or feelings. So, we all know about what these 40 objects of meditation. And there is a whole chunk dealing with feelings. Faith. Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha. Equanimity. The, four, the metta. Uh, passion. Uh, mudita. Equanimity. These are all feelings related. Okay? But the body takes up one half. Oh, no, no, no. There's the casinas and the colours. I forgot all those, the colour ones, which are also real, but those are a separate object. The body takes up ten parts. If you include Anapanasati, I think there's more. So, reflecting on how the body decay in the different stages, the different stages of decay, postures, the, the, the anapanasati, the breathing. So all these deals with the body. Why the body? Because, because actually, your body can hold that attention very well. Body can hold attention very well. You don't believe me, all you need to do is just injure something. Where it is a pain, your body, your mind cannot stray from the pain very much. Even your game, gaming cannot distract your mind for long. If you think about it, right? The moment your body has any trouble, you're all there. For days. Effortlessly. Okay? So actually, the body is a very powerful magnet for attention. Buddha had to strike that balance, I think. A balance between... So you understand, no? Samadhi is a balancing act. Think of it this way. It's a balancing act. And in this balancing act, if you tilt one way or the other, it's off. That is why there is this analogy. This guy who was a musician, he was a DJ, the musician, before he joined the Sangha. And he couldn't meditate. He had so much difficulty. Then the Buddha asked him, do you recall when your strings are winding up too tightly? What happened? Oh, sound not nice. When the strings are too loose, what happened? Sound not nice. It has to be just right. So it's that balancing act. So whatever instrument that he introduced to his disciples, it must be such that he, the person is able to balance. Body. So, uh, one, body actually does hold your attention, but you don't want the attention to be stuck there. You want this attention to kind of drift around, stay, but not obsess. You don't want that, that balance. So that is why using this body so big, right? Body so big. You're not supposed to go into one spot. You're supposed to flow, to see this, this form. Body is big, right? You can see. Breathing is movement, right? Did you, did you hear me use the word breath? I use the word breathing, which is a direct translation from the Pali term. Ana apanasati. Breathing in, breathing out. So that movement, you want to go into this flow, this movement, so that the mind doesn't lock, it flows. Mimics the regular mind. But you want that quiet, that stillness amidst the movement. Can you now see how difficult it is? It's a flow. But I cannot start a class telling you how difficult it is, Ma. It's a fault, okay, not mine. But actually, it's not that difficult. Because you all went through it, ma. You can now understand that there is this movement going on. And you, what you want is attention. The object 
is your body. But you are aware of attention, aware of the present attentiveness. Okay? The object, to first bring out that attention, now you're aware of the attention, now you're aware that the, of attentiveness. Understand? So it's not just at the object, but the mind looking at object, the mind looking at the object. That is the state you want. Story for another day, but you use this body which has this movement, this flow, and because it's heavy and it's clear, you will stay with it. You stay with it for after a while, after a while, the body will disappear, but the breathing doesn't disappear. This very subtle breathing is in the background. And then you get into the state where you can watch the feeling and still watch breathing. The mind can do gymnastic. Maybe one day I'll start a class lah, and we will do this properly. Not in the morning talk. Okay? Now, you ask just the body, you can also use feeling. That is why meta. Meta is the other method that people teach. So you bypass the body, you go straight into meta. You go, okay, you go straight into feeling. Is that better? Uh, only if you know how to do it, right? How many of you have done meta meditation? How was it? Silence. How, how was it? Was it easy? Good and bad lah. Got good day, got bad day. Oh. Good day, oh. MRT, you know? bad day, nothing happens. I just don't feel it. Yes? Ah, salah already. Meta, very powerful. You can, you can, meta is even faster than body. But I will only do meta after you do the body right. I will do that. Because then your samadhi is steady. Because meta is words. You've got to go into the feelings, your words. It is to get the joy and the stillness. But if you just end there, also nothing happens. Okay? I forgot your second question. Uh, I don't, uh, feeling tone, the understanding when it arises. Mm. Why, does why does feeling help with samadhi? You know your kids. Uh, how many of you have kids? Children? You tell me, your kids study that time hard or not? So hard, right? But when he play game that time, happy or not? No need to tell him to say still, he sits still, right? The human mind likes pleasant. When something is pleasant, he will get engaged longer, for longer. Okay? You all must remember this, huh? The human mind pays attention when it is pleasant. When it is unpleasant, it wants to get away. Okay? If it is neutral, it will be totally disinterested. Uh, correct. Totally uninterested. When it's neutral. I always tease my class. When I conduct mindfulness class, I always tease them. I said, tell me, strong feelings, momentous feelings versus negligible, forgettable feelings. Which one do you think happen more often for you in a day? And how, what's the percentage? And the answer is always, oh, 50-50. 50-50, 50% 50, 50, 50, 50 pleasant and angry or whatever, strong emotion. 50% the forgettable one. I say, you sure? Yes. Oh, for me, more. 60% uh, pleasant, 40% neutral. No, it's probably 10%, 90%. Or maybe 99% and 1%. Will you brush your teeth? Will you press the lift? When you walk up the stairs, when you come in, pay, pay, pay school fees, when you do a lot, a lot, a lot of things, it's all neutral feeling, but forgettable. So your, your 24 hours a day, the odds are, assuming you sleep for 8 hours, uh, how many is left? Huh? Uh, 16 hours, right? The odds are in the 16 hours, you at most got 20 minutes of Joy. Uh, just now earlier on, 10 minutes. 10 minutes of joy. Oh, three hours, here you are. Three hours of joy, right? But you go home and say, 90, 10. 10% 10 forgettable, 90% joy. Feelings are really, really powerful. So if you sit and your mind, your experience is bland, 
right? You sit, then your experience blend, then from blend to painful because you're so aware your body starts to numb, then just, oh, blend and painful. Why I sit and burn my life away? Right? It's, it's hell. Someone, this is self-inflicted hell. These Buddhists are so weird. No wonder they always say, life is suffering. <laughs> right? But that's not what the Buddha said. Right? You must know that. So the Buddha entertain you and give you, a reward you, not entertain, a reward you with pleasant. And that's what he said. Practice got painful and pleasant. You can samadhi, you experience samadhi, is pleasant. You cannot experience samadhi, is poor thing, poor thing. No wonder so dukkha arya satya. You know what i So feeling very powerful. With good feeling, with good feeling, your kids will all learn to meditate. And you know what's so sad? You can guarantee the good, the, the good sitting. You can guarantee, I can guarantee the good sitting. Okay? I can guarantee it. You go home and you, you must internalize what I said today. You internalize it and slowly, slowly ease into your joy. Okay? Uh, from online? <laughs> there's one from online. During the meditation at the beginning, I actually felt fear upon realizing that I have no control and I am nothing. I started tearing, not out of joy, but fear. Help. Okay. If this is the case, then you, you will want to do with uh, metta. If for whatever reason that when you sit, the sense of fear arises, then it is better to learn how to do it via the metta pleasant route. That's one. Metta is one. The other one is faith. If you, if you have deep connection with the Buddha, every time you light the candle, you bow before Buddha, you tears. My hero. If you are, if you are very fortunate and you're of this blend, this colour, right? Then gratitude to the Buddha is your ticket in to acquire it. Okay? Yep. That's it. Okay. okay. Yep. Uh. We're going to do sharing of merits with uh yes. BF, he is BF a uh, member, right? Bali. Yeah. X. 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 Wow. Wonderful. Passed away recently, and I would like us, the members, today, to share merits with him. Yeah, yeah I remembered. May I invite all of you to share merits with. Uh, Charlie, brother Charlie soon. Okay, let's do two minutes. May he be well and happy wherever he has been reborn. And may he continue to stay in the Dhamma. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Right. So after all the good actions, uh, speech and thoughts that we have done for this morning, let us continue with the dedication of merits. Let us invite all sentient beings to participate in our acquired merits. Eta wata cha amehi sambatam punya sampadam 
Sabe dewa anu modantu, saba sampati sidia, etawata ca amehi, sambatam punya sampadam, sabe buta anu modantu, saba sampati sidia. Etawata ca amehi sambatam punya sampadam sabe sata anu modantu saba sampati sidia. Let us dedicate the merits of participating in a wholesome dharma activity to our departed relatives and friends. Idang menya tinang ho tu sukita ho tu nyatayo. Idang menya tinang ho tu sukita ho tu nyatayo. Idang menya tinang ho tu sukita ho tu nyatayo. And of service dedication, I dedicate the merits which I have accumulated to the cultivation of my mind in order to bring happiness and benefits to all sentient beings. I dedicate the merits to my parents, children, spouse, relatives, friends, colleagues, and my adversaries, wishing them long life, good health, happiness, and prosperity. May we never part from the triple gem, and may we always walk the path towards enlightenment. Closing homage, let us pay respects to the triple gem. Arahang sama sambuto bagawa Pudang bagawantang abiwademi Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo Tamang Namasami Supati Pano Bhagavato Sawaka Sangho Sangha Namami Sadu, sadu, sadu.